Hi everybody, I'm Scott, and today I have another alleged power conditioner. I mean, this thing is kind of alleged to be a power conditioner, but really it just says high-end audio grade noise filter. So, I mean, power conditioner is kind of a nebulous term that can really be anything that improves the quality of power. But I tend to think of power conditioner as something more robust that protects against under and over voltages and transients. And this does protect against allegedly spikes and surges. Um, as well as noise above one kilohertz, which, I mean, let's be honest, I don't think that kind of noise is going to affect most modern electronic equipment. If you're running some old-fashioned tube amplifiers, maybe, sure, but like anything with a modern electronic power supply, that power supply is going to filter out most anything weird in the incoming power. So, uh, that being said, like, I didn't buy this because I needed it. I bought it because it had a strange mix on Amazon of quality and non-quality. It looked like a quality product, but the description is a little... I don't know. It lacks a little something, let's say. I'm going to show you that right now, and then we'll unbox this thing. So, sadly, this thing was not cheap, which is what made me suspicious about it. So it was either something very high quality, or something just made to look high quality that actually did nothing. Like a lot of that quote-unquote audiophile crap out there. Uh, for example, they recommend... Sorry for the spasticness of that. They recommend you buy this with special, like, shielded, ultra-braided power cords, or whatever the hell these are. Um, high-end, hi-fi, universal AC power cord. Yeah, th those aren't going to do anything for you. So, I was kind of wondering if this was in the same vein of snake oil as those cords. Um, it has some features which are dubious in their usefulness. Phase detect. Phase in the ground wire connection of AC source can be detected automatically. Okay, great. Don't know what that means. Um, overload protection. Well, yeah, any uh, reasonable power strip is going to have that. Uh, voltage protection. Its circuit detects dangerous voltage irregularities and provides the highest level of surge and spike protection. Is that really an and, or is it saying it just provides surge and spike protection? Because I don't think it does voltage regulation. But we'll see. Metal casing, okay, with thickness aluminum plates, come with six pieces hospital-grade filtered outlets, which are not cheap if those are actual, if those are actual hospital-grade filtered outlets, which they kind of look like they are. And four pieces industrial-grade direct outlets, um, maybe, maybe those could be, it's hard to tell. Power clean, oh, good, power clean. It ensures that all devices connected to this thing receive clean filtered power, which reduce noise. That's just saying it'll do what it said above. So, kind of vague and pointless description of what it does here. If you look at it closely, it really says it filters digital noise greater than 10 decibels, greater than or equal to. I'm not sure if that's an equal sign. Um, oh, negative minus 10 decibels, probably. 2 megahertz to 100 megahertz. Restrain interference above 1 kilohertz. And that seems to be really all it does. Um, again, useful, I guess, if you're running analog equipment, but uh, not useful so much with digital stuff. So I'm not saying this is snake oil. Please don't get me wrong. Like, I would never declare a product to be snake oil without actually, you know, seeing inside of it and knowing exactly what it does. And again, for certain applications, this type of thing might be very useful. I have a feeling it's sold to people and a lot of people buy it for whom it won't be that useful. Like I said, most anything with an electronic power supply, any reasonable grade audio equipment is going to have a very well protected power supply. So, yeah, um, that would be redundant in this sense. So let's see what's in here. Kind of just repeats the stuff on here that was uh, stated on the device itself in the Amazon listing. Good to know. Oh, that's kind of satisfying. And then deep in the box is a very weirdly coiled up power cable. And it's just your standard, like, computer electronic style power cable. Nothing fancy here. But here's apparently where the good stuff lies. All right, well, it certainly feels like good quality. It's not terribly heavy, I'll give it that. But it is, uh, this feels like steel here. 
and then aluminum on the ends, almost certainly aluminum on the ends. And on one end, it's got a power input and a circuit breaker. On the other end, it's got a power indicator, the phase indicator, and a uh, nice on-off switch that's protected from accidentally being hit by this uh, guard here. So, kind of nice, well thought out. I liked, one of the things I liked about it was the sort of retro look. It's a piece of modern equipment, but it looks like it could belong in the 60s almost. Just the way it's made and the way the indicator lights are. So, uh, yeah. And before we dive into it, there you go. That's what it says on the front. Exactly what it said in the Amazon listing, I believe. And here is a close-up of the hospital-grade receptacles. They're marked like hospital-grade receptacles, but uh, who knows? They're also 20-amp receptacles, which is kind of weird. And then these four are just direct, I guess, from the mains with no filtering because, as is implied by that being filtered. And on the bottom, nothing special, just four screwed-on rubberized feet. Before I take it apart, I guess we owe it to ourselves to actually just plug it in and turn it on and uh, see what the LEDs are doing. That looks like it's probably an LED under a lens. It's kind of made to look as if it's a neon lamp under there, but obviously a blue neon lamp. But I'm pretty sure it's not. And the phase LED is very dim, but it is on and flickering at 60 hertz. And those do shut off when the power gets shut off to the unit. Okay, good to know. And not that I think it won't, but let's just make sure that there's power going to these receptacles. With my little flame lamp. Yep, that is working. And the unfiltered receptacles, I should imagine, are functioning fine. Yes, indeed. Cool. I didn't expect much else. And now I guess what you really want to see is, let's open this thing up. It uses uh, hex screws. And of course, I'm missing my exact right size hex screw, but a Torx screwdriver will work in a pinch. And why use hand tools unnecessarily? I should note it uses the same size and type of screw all the way around, which makes it nice for my purposes. Ah, it just comes right off the base plate. And it's actually very neat inside, I'll give them that. This is really a clean looking interior. And uh, here is the business end. There's not much going on there. There's a choke. There are some components I'm gonna have to look at. A metal oxide varistor it looks like, maybe. And uh, some wires going to the LEDs in the front. And um, then just some, some receptacles. And so just to uh, put everything in perspective, this is the power input. So it comes down around here. All the way over to the switch on the other end. Kind of inefficient, but sure. Then the switch goes into the board. And then this other thing here is the circuit breaker, and that is wired from the mains in and then back down there. So there's a couple of big resistors, I'm in a couple of diodes, I'm going to guess those are to drive the LEDs. And this common mode choke isn't going to do a hell of a lot. And then what are these? So these are just class X2 capacitors, 22 nanofarad. And I looked at these and these bigger guys are just 220 nanofarad capacitors. Uh, presumably just across the live and the neutral on this, on these two. And then uh, I'll take this board out and figure out exactly where all this is routed. But, uh, uh, and this is not a metal oxide varistor based on the markings on the circuit board because it itself has no markings. It appears to be a PTC thermistor. 
And then on the other end of the board here, we have a resistor, which is probably a discharge resistor for the capacitors. I'm going to guess it's just a high value resistor. So, uh, yeah, not a lot going on here. I guess it will protect against some noise. So can't blame them for lying on that front. And it is a nice uh, power strip as it stands. I mean, it just seems very well made. And the receptacles seem to be of decently high quality. At least these four, these three do. These two are actually, I wouldn't call these industrial grade because they're just backstab receptacles. There's no screw terminals at all. And these are actual compression screw terminals, which is a mark of quality in a receptacle unit. So, and these appear to be self-grounding too. So I would say, um, yeah, these three are actually quite decent. And uh, these two are utter crap that you would find around, uh, around the house, around a poorly built house. All right, I guess all that's left is to take out this board. Fortunately, they make it pretty easy with these uh, screw terminals and the two LEDs being disconnectable very easily. I'm not even gonna keep track of which is which. I don't think it matters. Okay, I got all the wires loosened up and uh, I should just be able to lift out this board. Yeah, there we go. Not too complex on the back. Oh, that's interesting though. One of the standoffs snapped off when I was uh, unscrewing that. How unusual. It's this one right here in the corner. You can see where it used to be. I wonder if uh, the other ones are closer coming off too. Now well, the other ones seem pretty solid, but that's a manufacturing defect. So line in and neutral in are here and here respectively. And I believe the unprotected receptacles were just wired off of these two pins. So I'm guessing the two outer pairs are jumpered together. And indeed they are. They're on the same solder pad. And then they can, this solder pad continues up to here which would appear to have this resistor, this capacitor, and then this choke, this leg of the choke attached to live, or I'm sorry, attached to neutral in that case, but it's mirrored on the other side, on the live side. And then on the other side of the choke, it's the same arrangement, except instead of just a regular resistor, we have a PTC thermistor, which is effectually just a resistor. And then these 22 nanofarad capacitors are just wired between neutral and ground it looks like because here is live then the capacitor and then it goes to the ground plane that surrounds the whole thing and attaches to this ground trace and this is just the ground going straight through as it does and then there's unpopulated spots for a diode and another resistor which i'm guessing would be another led socket i'm guessing and then here again i'm i surmise that this these are for the leds but let's see yep this big fat resistor here goes directly to this connector for one of the leds via that diode and the other resistor has a trace that goes all the way around to the other led connector there and the leds appear to be wired not to neutral but to ground that's interesting. Let me take a couple of close-up pictures of this board, and then I'll put it back together, and I want to see what happens if we reverse live and neutral. I don't think anything is going to happen. Yeah, that looks good. So, a little disappointing, to be honest. Uh, the circuitry here is nothing you wouldn't find in a decent, high-quality power supply, like inside an audio amplifier, for example or you know, any other type of modern electronic equipment is gonna have some variation of this circuit. And then probably some more stuff to boot to even provide greater filtering and uh, smoothing of the, vol of the power. So um, yeah, not impressed. This certainly 
this certainly isn't worth the $180 price tag. Uh, not remotely. This is probably, I don't know, a couple of dollars worth of components right here. Maybe five if you're lucky. That being said, um, the hospital grade receptacles seem to be good quality. Uh, you know, not worth 170, 180 bucks. Uh, overall, I mean, not it's, it's well made. It's a nice looking unit. They certainly uh, did what they intended to do there, if you know what I mean. All right, I'll screw it back down on the remaining three standoffs, and uh, the lack of complexity here at least makes it easy to put back together uh, the way I found it. Uh, the only thing I didn't note is that these two tabs here and here, I guess, are for grounding the enclosure. They are just soldered onto the back of the board, onto the ground plane. So nothing uh, too exciting there. You didn't miss anything with those. The only difficult part about that reassembly, uh, it wasn't a technical issue. It was more of a mechanical issue. There's a very short wire going between the switch and the actual terminal there. And so I kind of had to wrangle it back into position. Had I noticed that ahead of time, I probably would have slid the board onto that wire just because that would have been a little bit easier. But uh, I got in place with some, uh, with some brute force. Okay, with that more or less back together, I don't even need to put on the bottom cover. I mean, as long as I don't stick anything metal up inside of there, we'll be fine. There's not necessarily an approved way to reverse the live and neutral on a, uh, on a socket, so I'm going to have to improvise here with a box I made for testing power supplies in perhaps a future video, which allows me to very dangerously connect these banana plugs and thusly this receptacle. Oh yeah, I want to reverse them. So we'll plug blue. And in this case, in case you're wondering about the weird color choices, I'm using blue for live and yellow for neutral. And that's just to not confuse black with black when I'm dealing with DC stuff on the same bench. So I know that blue and yellow are AC and uh, red and black are DC. Whereas red and black can both be live in North America. So it's a little bit unusual, but it works for my purposes. Now we can turn this on. And we have 120 volts. Now if I connected something to here, that would connect all the way through this box and live and neutral would not be reversed. But of course I have live and neutral reversed on this box, which is grounded. At least we hope it is. So I'll take my nice purple power cable, plug that into there, plug that into there. Well, I'll be damned. The phase light did turn off, but the power light is on. So I guess that does do something. It must just be the way the diode is pointed. Oh, it's a half wave bridge rectifier. So one of the diodes probably drives one LED and both of the diodes drive the power LED. That's probably how they do it. And I missed that on the circuit. So anyway, I guess the phase LED actually does do something. So that's cool. I don't know how often you're getting your live and neutral reversed. I mean, if it's reversed in your house, that's indicative of a much larger problem. And um, yeah, if you're just finding out about it after you bought this box, well, sorry. Um, get one of those little like $3 receptacle testers and that'll let you know also. Um, you don't need a $180 piece of vaguely filtering equipment to, to find that out. Well, that was a needlessly complicated way of figuring that out. Well, I was going to make this a longer video and actually put this thing through its paces by introducing some noise to the line in signal and seeing how much it filtered out. But just looking at the simplicity of the circuitry, it's, uh, it turns out to be kind of disappointing in that it's, it's not better. Um, it's just a few dollars worth of components on a, on a one sided circuit board. And uh, I, I wouldn't really expect too much of it. In the end, this is really just a glorified power strip. A nice one. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. But um, I would just use it as a power strip. It will suppress some noise. But like I said, nothing that a modern electronic power supply wouldn't do anyway. Um, if you have sensitive analog equipment that you want to protect and you want to filter the power, get something better than this. Something that does more in the way of filtration and voltage regulation maybe even an isolation transformer. I don't know what your specific needs might be, 
but this isn't going to do a hell of a lot. So unless very specific frequencies of, of electrical noise are bothering your equipment, um, I, I would pass on this. You could probably get the same thing cheaper with the same components, first of all. And if you're willing to spend this much money, you could probably get something with actual filtering and with more power conditioning inside of it than just this. So I don't want to th throw on dispersions here, but uh, I think this company is just making something that looks quite nice, but is really kind of cheap on the inside. Um, I don't see the value here for that price. If this was selling for $40, $50, I would say, yeah, you know, it's a solid power strip. Uh, worth getting for that purpose at least, but yeah, this is, this is just uh, rather disappointing. Anyway, I've been Scott. Uh, this has been the what the fuck has this been? This has been the W Audio W thirty nine hundred high end audio grade noise filter. Hmm. And uh, if you enjoyed this video. You probably didn't really because it's kind of, kind of anticlimactic. Um, hit the like button. Yeah. It, like I said, I'm kind of disappointed too. I was expecting more from it. Or less. But instead it was mediocre. Well, see you next time. At least I could use the receptacles in something. All right.